Now, getting back to the Japanese films we were talking about earlier, uh, the Japanese have this saying, uh, strip away everything not essential in your story, and then you're left with pure magic. Explain that. Well, I mean, look at a movie like Tokyo Story, which many people have listed as one of the best films of all time. And in that film, it's just a story about these parents come to visit their kids who they haven't seen in a long time, you know, years and years. And their family is no longer, has fallen apart. And the, the kids treat the parents very badly. They basically almost treat them like they're an unwanted guest. They're not very civil or hospitable to them at all. And the parents just, uh, decide just to leave and go back home early as a result. Now, this is a very simple story, but it, it's, a, it's a movie that almost moved me to tears when I watched it. It was really quite powerful. And the reason it worked was because they followed that principle. They stripped away everything you know, that wasn't essential to the story. And what you were left with was really a, a powerful shell of a story. You know, and, you know, I see this all the time in films and filmmaking. You know, they're throwing in chase scenes. They're throwing in fist fights. They're throwing in explosions. It's like, does that add to the story? <laughs> you know? If it doesn't, you should take it out. And most of the time, it doesn't, you know. I, I will say this, though, about the Bourne series. You know, the world can be very violent. You know, in the world Bourne lives, it can be very violent and dangerous. So, you know, they did milk that somewhat, but it was not contrived for the world that they were creating for their stories. You know, that's one of the better examples of it. But in most films that are out there, you know, it's just like, oh, here comes the action scene. Here comes the chase scene. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't, it, you know, you watch it, you're just like, okay, we just got to wait for this to be over to figure out what's going to happen next. Favorite Japanese film? Favorite Japanese film? Yeah. You got one? Yeah, Let's... well, I got, a, I got a ton of them. But, but <laughs> I, probably my favorite Japanese film is Yojimbo. Sorry, Tricio Mifuni. I actually talked with Kurosawa, and uh, I, I told him that I saw Yojimbo was really the sequel to Seven Samurai. Okay. You know, I, I, you know, even though he didn't consider it that way at the time, you could see how I, I could see it that way. Whereas Mifuni plays a character in both films. He plays Kachu in uh, in Seven Samurai. He says Sanjuro in Yojimbo, and I saw it as like his grandson a couple generations later. You know, it, you know, made it as a samurai, and now was out of work samurai. So I saw it as kind of a continuation of that storyline. You know, most people don't realize this, but Alien and Wally -E were both sequels to Silent Running. You know, they were. You know, and it, it was funny because uh, Cameron found that out. He was just blown away by it because he'd never heard of Silent Running. He just saw Alien. He's like, I gotta see that now. <laughs> I want to see where this came from. You know. Okay, let's skip over to, to American films now. Kind of went, hit a little bit of the Japanese mm. films. Uh, I'm just going to throw a couple out there, and then you tell me uh, what you like about the film. Um, Barfly. Oh, yeah, great film. Absolutely, absolutely great, you know. I, I, like the, I like the movie because the main character in there, the work plays, he's such an interesting character. The guy, in, in one way, is like a genius-level poet, but at the same time, he's dysfunctional drunk and alcoholic you know and to me that was just such an interesting story and it's it's something that just hasn't been beaten to death <laughs> like so many films we've seen before over and over and over again you know it was it was daring it was original it was unique you know it was quirky <laughs> it was and, and it came across as being real as a story and it, it's interesting watching the film because your character intellectually in many ways his character is very developed but emotionally he's a very un person you know and I thought that was an interesting contrast and we do see that in real life people that are like that they're rare but they are out there and to me it was it was a story where we learn from the character's <coughs> failure you know where this guy just really enjoys chaos he really enjoys being a bum he really enjoys being a loser he really enjoys being a barfly you know and and it's like yeah you don't want to emulate the guy but you can learn from his mistakes <laughs> Love the film. Great. I, I thought Ricky Rourke should have gotten an Oscar nomination for his performance. You know, he was really, he was really great in that movie. So that will uh, teach, teach all the folks out there, love Barfly. Watch it. Don't be Barfly. <laughs> yeah. What about Telling Lies in America? You know, I, I really felt that uh, that movie got an unfair bad rap. Okay. You know, 
interesting. Joe Esterhaus was talking about how that movie failed. And I was like, no, Joe, it didn't fail. The problem was, was that it had your name on it, and people saw you do Basic Instinct and Jagged Edge and these other types of... And this is a sweet little coming-of-age movie. He should have taken, put a pen name on it, you know, and then told people later that he wrote it, you know, because they were expecting Basic Instinct or Jagged Edge. You know, and this was something very different from what he'd done before. You know, and I, I felt his only mistake was he should have, you know, he should have, they should have marketed it differently. But story structure-wise, it was a great movie. You know, and I wouldn't have changed one single thing in the entire film. I, I, you know, if I gave it a great writing, it an A. I give the directing, acting, everything an A. Great movie. Great. Now, now we're gonna go on. Um, we're gonna go with Tyler's top films, and I've got it right here. I got the list. So we'll just kind of go down this list. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna get the names of okay. of the films that mm -hmm. you that you think are your tops yeah. here, and then you give a little short, little paragraph, little yeah, little outline, little blurb, it, yeah. little, little blurb of each one. Okay, S well, you've mentioned this several Seven times. Samurai. Seven Samurai, Mag you know, which yeah, yeah. and I never knew about Seven Samurai until I heard, you know, I saw Magnificent Seven yeah. first, and then I would hear from like, you know, oh, that's just that's just the American Western version of that Seven. Samurai, yeah, yeah. but you said okay, Seven Samurai. I give it the best film of all time. Film of all time, okay. Best film of all time, absolutely. And, you know, to me, it's such an interesting story because there's so many great things going on in this movie. We're going to do an entire show on it, but you know, in a nutshell, you know, it's about these people, these farmers who are being robbed by this gang of bandits, and in order to survive, they hire Sam, pay him three bowls of rice a day for them because that's all they can afford. So this is basically charity work on the part of the samurais. Part, but you know, you know it, it's interesting to me because these are people who are the instrument of their own salvation. You know, they go out, they hire samurais, you know, and they they fight with the samurais to save their village and to save their lives and their families, and their livelihoods. And it's based on a true story. And in there, there are really good role models in there, like Shimura plays Kambi, this kind of wise but strong but also kind-hearted samurai leader. And, and it shows the compassion of the Japanese people. To. You know, they're a society that does value compassion, they do value integrity. Which leads us to another one of, on your top ten list Yo here. Yojimbo. Yojimbo. Yeah. You know, to me, Yojimbo was just such a clever film because uh, Kurosawa came up with the idea, well, what if, you know, I ha you have two ba bad guys, two gangs, you know, two gangs that are bad, no good side to choose between. You know, what should my hero do? And he said, well, why doesn't he get the, the two gangs to kill each other off? And then he finishes off who's ever left. And that was the premise of Yojimbo. And, and it was interesting to me because Mufuni in that, uh, that film, he played Sanjuro, this ronin, out-of-work ronin, you know, who, uh, you, know, dis, you know, decides to get rid of these guys, have them fight each other, and then it'll kill off who's ever left. So they're just left at that point. But, you know, to me, it's such a clever story. And the thing is, is most people would never have the courage to try and do something like this. And the reason his character has the courage to do this is basically because he's a traumatized person. The guy's psychotic. He's in a state of shock. You know, when people are pushed that far, you see what I'm saying? They become crazy brave. They're willing to do anything. You know, and, and to me, it's just a brilliant film. Okay, next up. Now, I... This Arabia. one, this one's an epic. I mean, this yeah. one is like three. This you, hours long. Yeah, yeah. you got to get like two DVDs to watch this thing. Yeah. You know, shot in old school six. What is it, thirty two? Seventy millimeter. Seventy yeah. millimeter. Yeah. And you know, I saw some behind the scenes lugging around that oh, yeah, equipment. Yeah, it took years to make. That and it thing. took years to make. And uh, you know, basically, Peter O'Toole set for life off after that one. Yeah, basically. You know what I mean? Why I, 